Someone's just asked me, can you make jewellery with eco pour? And I thought that's a darn good question. And I've done a bit of research and I can't find many people doing that. And I thought, why? Now, one thought is maybe it's a little bit brittle if it's thinner. Um, but does that mean you can't use it? Is it brittle? I'm not, I'm not actually convinced it is that brittle if you mix it up properly. Anyway, we have here my attempt to answer that question. And folks, if, if you like what I start here and you'd like me to take this further, do lots more ideas and uh, show you how to turn it into jewellery afterwards, just let me know. I'd love to hear from you in the comments. Today my plan is simply to make a load of bits and just see how how it goes. Really I'm going to work with just mixing some colours. We'll try making actual beads and we will include some large hole European charm beads. We will do some flat blanks. Now this mould you can probably see is quite thin so let's use that as a tester to see is it brittle? Will it be okay? This is this mould, it's seen better days, bless it. I've used it so, so much, the stuff that now won't come off it, but I just love these hearts. So I thought we'd help, we'd try some of those. And there's a bit more depth to these. As you can see here, we've got a curved surface. So there's that, more beads. Um, kind of wibbly geode shapes. I <laughs> uh, don't quite know what I have in mind there, but we'll see. Now this one's an interesting mould that I got quite recently, and it's got some of these shapes have got lines in them so I thought we could see if we could do colours in between the lines maybe I don't know and then finally this one has also got lines in between but they are deeper so I think I've got more chance of doing it with those anyway I don't know let's have a go and uh, yeah the main main focus today will be seeing it how thinner pieces of eco pore behave and also just doing some colour in some of them. What I'm thinking, if you do want me to take this further, we could try decoupaging them, we could try painting them, we could stick gems on them, we can put stickers on them. Um, you know, the, the list is, I've actually got a list of about 20 different things uh, and I'm sure you'll add to that list because if you do want me to take this idea further and, and show you some more ideas, then by all means put comments down below and uh, let me know what you think we should try. I'll show you the list I've got so far before we finish though, so you'll know not to suggest the same things over. Right, let's get some eco pour mixed up. I'll grab some colours and we'll start having a play. But what I've got here are some jessamineite colours. As I said, I do know those will work because we tried them before. So we've got jessamineite colours. One thing I definitely won't need is white. Eco pore is extremely white. We'll have a closer look at the eco pore in a moment. But we've got lots of other lovely colours and they are they have been designed to work with jessamineite. I think there's some sort of acrylic. And the same goes here. These are from Homeware Designs and I've got quite a few colours here. I need to collect more actually. Um, but there's some beautiful colours. And these I know are, well they're, they're actually designed for this sort of material, so I know those will work. So we've got those. Now the other ones that I haven't tried yet, but I think will work, because I think these are basically acrylics, are airbrush inks. Now these were with a set for doing airbrushed nail art and things like that, but as it says it's water based, so it should work. I think, yeah, diluted with water, intermixable. I think it's basically a diluted acrylic. So I've got a couple of shades of girly pink in that. And I've got a little cheap tube, a very cheap uh, acrylic paint that I don't even know where I got that from. Anyway, we've got some colours. Let's have a look at the eco pore next then. Now you'll notice, not wearing gloves. Don't need to, that's fine. And that is because the stuff is safe. So what we're gonna do is we are going to mix some up. First of all, let's get, now it, it, it works very quickly, so I'm gonna get some molds ready that I want to play with first. Where's the big whole bead one gone? There it is. So let's have a play with these first. 
so let's mix it up so ecopore for anybody who's not used it before it is a lovely white powder look how white that is and it stays white as I said that's one of the things I like most about it and it's from just for you online now there are a number of these eco resin alternatives around and I tend to favour this one because it is so white and the other thing is it's very forgiving I've discovered I can paint onto it with all sorts of things again I'll put your links for I think probably easiest is if I put you a link to my um, resin alternatives playlist because that covers that covers all sorts excuse me I'll just have a clear up here I've just spilled some cleans up easy it is safe to use with kids because it's non-toxic uh, it's also quick so it solves that impatient kids situation that you might have what else can I tell you about is it cures quickly yep yeah. um, you can usually demold it in about half an hour to be fair though I tend to leave it more like an hour because especially for thinner pieces because then I'm going to be more sure that it's cured properly it can be a little brittle when you first demold it that's the reason I say that now I've got some tiny spoons here to put it out with I said it's forgiving the other reason I say it's forgiving is you just mix it with water this is just going to be a white batch by the way you just mix it with water the ratio is supposed to be 30 parts water to 100 parts powder that's what it says on the box obviously that is also 10 parts powder to one part water three parts water rather. now what I've done here is I've mixed it a lot runnier and you can do that I mean there will come a point where it will just be a gloop and it won't cure because there's too much water but for now um, that sort of really runny consistency you won't have a problem with that's fine or you could make it thicker and use it as a paste for more like, also almost like modelling now what I want to draw your attention to here is how white this is even when it's mixed look at that now the reason I did it thinner was because I wanted it to really run throughout the mould and not to worry too much about bubbles what you do about bubbles is you just give it a tap anyway um, and it does release bubbles you can get them trapped in little awkward corners and things which is just annoying but you can get that with any medium can't you right let's keep going you see I'm using paper pots because I can squish them the little plastic pots with the handles you can use those you can use you can use all sorts really whatever takes your fancy oh there's the other one so really all we're doing here is we're making up some blanks I'm going to do these wine glasses because I think we might want to do should we try some wine glass charms <laughs> you know what this isn't pouring terribly well I might change tactic with my pouring pot shortly uh, what else did we want? oh yes we wanted these this is this is the testing to see how brittle they are as well of course so I've done these quite thin and let's do a bigger one as well see it's starting to thicken up already isn't that amazing? Yeah, so these are quite thin, so we'll sit we'll do a bit of a brittleness test with these. So yeah, as I was saying, it's quite it is quite forgiving. Um you can go a bit eat quite a bit each side of the recommended ratio. When I said give it a tap, that's what I mean. A tap and a wiggle, give it a bit of a bit of a shake around. You can actually pick it up and drop it gently. Don't pick it up and drop it from too great a height because you'll splash the stuff everywhere. But all that's doing is helping to... See, I'll splash that bit. It's just helping to release any bubbles that might be trapped underneath. In the right angles of the mould, that's the annoying places, isn't it? Same as you get with resin, really. OK, I'm going to push those to one side. Next, then is let's see if we can make some solid beads and I'm going to colour these let's see if we can do a spectrum of colour I'm only going to mix the tiniest little bit up here
<laughs> she says. Put too much water in. See, I'm not measuring. Notice this, people. I do kind of eyeball measure a, a lot nowadays because that kind of comes with the experience with some of my materials. Um, most of the materials I use are a little bit forgiving anyway. But there are some things you need to be absolutely accurate about and I tend to avoid those. But when it comes to resin, I tend to, I use a lot of these little pots, silicon pots, paper pots, plastic pots, all sorts. And usually there's a mark on the side or I can see, oh, that's about half full. It has another half, you know, that sort of thing. So I am measuring, it's just not being as uh, scientific as you might think. I should be. <laughs> going to change pots wasn't I maybe we do that for the next one right I'm just going to try and stop this dripping everywhere <laughs> is my next trick now these are large hole beads now like the European style charm beads so we're going to want that up to the top but not over there we are, because otherwise the bead core won't go in. Right, there's that one. So we're now going to put a dot of this airbrush ink and see what happens. Because I think it ain't ink. <laughs> so we're going to have a pale pink one. This will start to go off soon. So I've only got so much work time. Oh, that's pretty. Oh, look. Come on, Barbie, let's go party. <laughs> It's starting to thicken already. A nice marbling effect going on by total accident. That's worth knowing. See how thick that is already. Amazing stuff. So yeah, if you're a bit like me and you're an impatient crafter, do check out just for you online. They do, they do this, which is great for the uh, impatient sorts, and they also do a two-hour cure epoxy. <laughs> it's just incredible, isn't it? People said, does it really cure in two hours? The epoxy? Yeah, pretty much. I, do, I can do mould after a couple of hours. I usually find I need to leave it another hour or so to yeah, really harden, but yeah. Oh, right now, this is... I don't know. No, 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 I think we're still okay. So let's put a bit of darker pink. Have I even opened this one? Yeah, I must have done. The top's dirty. Has it gone hard? It might have gone hard. Oh no. Oh no. Just not coming out the top. Okay. Need to clean the top. Oh, it has gone a bit yicky. Do you want to still use that? Ooh, look at that. Let's see if we can still use it. Might put a drop of water in that later. I'm thinking because it's water based, it should, it might. Uh, It might work still. Yeah, yes. <laughs> that's funny. Right, okay. Let's go in with our deeper pink. It's not much deeper. That colour hasn't done a lot, has it? Yeah, probably that's one that might be one for the bin. But anyway, let's have two pink beads. This is going to give us what we intended for experimenting. Now, because we've got some colours on the go here, I'm going to move on to another mould as well. all in. Can you hear the rain? It's a glorious December day. Here in England the weather is doing what it normally does in December. It's just miserable. 
I've got the window open. Now you don't really need to worry too much about a ventilated room and all that. It's just that I like to have a window open anyway. Because like I said, this stuff is non-toxic. Right, just use that noise. That's me getting another wipe out. Using my usual wonder wipes. I use them for everything. <laughs> we use them in the kitchen. We use them just all over. Right. Before this starts to go off, I'm going to put that to one side and let's have a go at doing something with these cute hearts because I want a solid one of those, I think. Now we've got to get it in between these raised bits. And as you can see, it's really thickening. It's not flowing like it was. So I'm going to get little micro brush and push it around a little bit so this doesn't self level unless you made it very runny it doesn't self level like uh, resin does so worth that little bit of tapping and shaking it about a bit. See if you can get your bubbles up. Yeah, you see that colour I mixed in? It's just made dots in it, really. Right, let's quickly just use this bit up. Because that will soon be too thick to use any further. See what I mean about the lines in these ones? This is what I was, this is kind of what I was thinking. Can we do this? And you need you, you're going to need it quite thick to do this with, I think, so that it doesn't go over the lines. Uh, although, because these lines on this one are quite deep, then maybe I'd get away with it. I don't know. Hmm. Where's that other one that's got lines in? So I think, I mean, you meant to have possibly 20 minutes work time with this stuff. I would say that's probably about right. Um, you're pushing luck once you get up to that, though. I tend to work on the basis I've probably got 10 minutes, to be sure. And it does depend how watery you've made it. Probably the warmth of your room as well. I've never really thought about that, but probably. I don't quite know what I'd do with these ones. Meant to be for like earrings or pendants. I don't can't say to be to my taste, but uh, yeah, maybe there could be something extra to go on a keyring. You know, like you put like a, a letter and a something else, or something like that I don't know right I think we're pretty much all done with the pink so let's put that to one side clean up our little doodah so that's putting in solid colours um, let's see if we can marble some would that be pretty it might be and I think we can use that lighter shade of pink for that sort of thing. But the other thing was, where's that tube of purple acrylic paint? Let's see if this works. I've had this for years. Now these are already curing over here. So let's let's go in with our acrylic paint next. Incidentally, all the, tool, the tools I'm using here, if you want to know, are um, cocktail stirrers of various sorts. Right, let's see how purple we can make this. <laughs> And it's still cool. 
through. No, well, I never. It doesn't like that paint. Why doesn't it like it? It's just acrylic paint. It's a cheap one. That does not want to mix properly. Oh well, let's see how it works. It's giving it a kind of gritty look. How strange. Yeah, it's not unpleasant though. It's just not very purple either. Let's see if we can get into here. gone over the edges. Not too worried because it's the other side that we're going to see. I'm going to back these. Probably just with white. Now people have been asking as well about glitter in them. Um, I have done this in some of my videos already and the save you go hunting for those. Um, the verdict is is that this stuff will grip glitter in but it doesn't really stick as such. It kind of forms around it and holds it in. Let's try mixing it in with a lot of the paint first. I don't get this because this is just acrylic paint. It's really odd. That is odd. Yeah, so where was I? Glitter. Yes, glitter it grips. It doesn't stick. Ooh, you know what? Ch cheap acrylic paint gives a kind of weird speckly stone effect. That's really odd. Oh, that's what's happening, look. You see? It is not going in. Well, how strange. It is a bit. I mean, the, the paint is, it is colouring. Not what I expected at all. How odd. Anyway, let's carry on. I honestly had that acrylic paint on the this will definitely work list in my head. Yeah, deeply strange. Anyway, it's um, it's created a kind of interesting effect. I just hope it cures okay. I'm just going to chuck the rest into one of these because just because really get it used up and try a different acrylic paint in a minute because I must show you having had it go a bit wrong here I must show you that acrylic paints normally do work uh, oh here's one of my favorites you'll have seen this in my other videos it's just called Naples yellow and it's from Windsor and Newton so there's no argument about this being a cheap acrylic paint I'm only going to do it I'm only going to do a little bit because Gosh, it's busy outside today. Yeah, I'm only going to do a little bit because uh, I've got a lot of colours very similar to this in my homeware designed ones. So, here we go. Naples yellow, which is a nice sort of natural colour. And I'm going to put a lot in just to show you that it can work. There we go. We've got a lovely rich cream out of that. Takes quite a lot of mixing in. But it works. So let's put that into. I'm just going to put that into. Let's have some more beads. Let's go for some square beads. Just because I haven't done square beads for ages. Another question that came up in my viewer questions about this one was um, whether you'd then need to seal them. Frankly, it's up to you. Um, I, I would, just to give them that extra little bit of durability. And um, before we turn them into jewellery, I will show you how I would do that. Uh, where else should we put some of this? Let's go in here. So there we are. Yeah, acrylics do work. 
it, you do have to do a lot more stirring though to be honest I mean that took a lot of stirring to get it to go that even oops drip and it's still got slightly like a, a bit of a stone effect to it but they do work watercolors also work by the way right now on to I'll show you food colouring. The only thing I don't know about food colouring is does it fade? Um, purple food colouring. I've got a beautiful purple food colouring and I don't know where it is now. Let's try this one. This one's called grape. I'm determined to get purple one way or another. Let's bring these back. Don't know if I'll use all of these moulds today even. <laughs> Incidentally, all of these little pots I'll be able to clean up afterwards. Just give them, let them dry properly and give them a good tap and out pops the residue of the eco pour. So you can reuse them. So let's, where's the food covering? Have I even opened this one? I bet I have because it's purple. <laughs> one drip. Yeah, I don't know whether this will fade in the sun. So far... The things, look at, the, look at that, isn't that beautiful? Now, so far, the things I've got on test have worked really well. Um, out in Denmark, I've got a set of coasters that I sent to a friend, and they are holding up fine. Um, in fact, I saw photos from just a few days ago of them in use. And they are most definitely still very minty green. And that was food colouring, some of that was, so... I've got them reporting back to me, you know, let me know if they fade at any point. So far so good. They're not being left in direct sunlight though, I mean they're being used as coasters. So <laughs> Indoors at this time of year, in Denmark as you can imagine. Now I appear to have got a bit of another colour in the bottom of this one. Next we'll have a look at marbling because these are just going to be mostly nice solid colour beads aren't they? So let's have a look at what happens if we try to marble it but let, actually let's get a bit more in these first. Oh <coughs> yeah not like that though. <laughs> okay you go in there that's fine god knows what's going to happen with that now a uh, bit of a mess anyway need another wipe so as promised marbling now we're going to need let's do this in these geode moulds let me just check you're still in shot I'm actually sitting down on my new chair today which means I can't see whether I'm in shot or not. <laughs> now, when I've tried to do marbling before, one thing I have found is that you do need to keep your eco pour quite thick. Because otherwise the colour kind of just disperses through it and you just end up with a plain colour or, or a bit of a mess. So this is where you do want to mix it that little bit thicker. So I've got it like quite thick creamy now. Let's put a tiny bit more because the colouring we're putting in is also liquid. And we're going to drop. One drop of food colouring. And we're just going to do that. And that is it. We are going to pour. Also pouring into these little hearts. And 
And actually I might as well pour the last of it into this one that uh, I kind of filled up by accident. As you can see the streaks are staying in it because the medium was thicker to start with. too fussy about what colours go where and half of these colours won't go together <laughs> I think because I really don't know what I'm actually going to do with these things here I really don't know anyway we'll get on to the proper colours that are intended exactly for this sort of thing next I think the big message with this one is get some and play with it Now obviously we've got a load of blanks here that we'll then be able to decorate and do things with, which is really good. Because that is what we will be doing next. Just wanted to get this testing, you know, is it durable enough phase out of the way really. That's the, uh, that's the main thing. Right, we could do some, could do some big beads next. This is where the colours from Homeware Designs are going to come in. Now these, as I said, are properly made for this. So we know that the colours will work. But I was just wanting to give you some options of things that you might already have. That was my thought. And we're back to mixing it reasonably liquid, quite thin, because that will make it easier for any bubbles to get out. Now what we've got here, we have got pumpkin spice, that's a bright yellowy colour. Uh, we've got orangey yellowy, it's pumpkin coloured. Um, apricot, oh I like apricot, let's do an apricot batch. And this is as it sounds, you see in the bottle it looks, it doesn't look anywhere near as vibrant as it does when it comes out. Look at that. Isn't that lovely? <laughs> and look how easy it mixes. So if you're thinking of doing any nice colours in your eco pour, I think it works in jessamineite as well, uh, and anything else for that matter that's water-based, do check out this firm. Um, I'm trying to think. I know I haven't got a discount code for you. Claire's Crafty Corner might have. So it's worth a check over at Claire's. Right, what we're doing here by the way is making a set that should all colour coordinate. Now these ones we don't have to worry about whether a um, a bead centre will fit because these don't have bead centres these aren't large hole beads these are just whoops, these are just regular ones so I'm going to come back and put the stripey effect in that one and then this one will just part fill up ready to do another stripey effect Okay. By the way, you can do spotty. Do you want to do spotty? Let's do some spotty. There's a spotty one there. Um, let's do a spotty heart. Now, the way to do spotty is like this. mix up the colour and you're going to want it reasonably thick I 
And I think actually, I'm going to leave it as it's almost completely white. And we're going to do this heart. Now, as regards how thick, I'm, I'm going to say you want it to stay in place. So, dot, dot, dot. Use a cocktail stick by all means or your micro brush or whatever to do this. Um, just bear in mind you've got to be careful not to scratch and wreck your mould. <laughs> so these are going to be really random dots. And you know what I've never tried? I've never tried doing dots in this curved heart. I'm thinking they're going to dribble. Yeah. Oh well, let's do something creative anyway. Let's get, oh yes, hang on, let's do that. So I'm just going to fill up the bottom of the heart with that. So that's a different colour to the rest of it. And then I'm going to put a bit of another colour in. Should we go for lippy? Oh no, hang on. Yeah, let's put some lippy in this one. This one goes really vivid. I'm putting two dots. It's called lippy. It's not named after me. But look, it goes like a lovely rich, it's almost like a terracotta colour. And you could make it a lot more vivid than that if you want. Look at that. Now I find that a really nice colour for some of my creations. Let's see, let's do, let's do, let's do. Let's do beads again. This is fun, isn't it? Is it fun? I'm rambling. I don't know how you people watch my videos sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes these videos can get quite long. I do edit them down to cut out what I think is a complete waste of time, but then people tell me I should leave it in. So, it's hard to know what to do. I think, basically, I do what I think, and then I leave you to, you know, fast forward where it suits you. See what I mean about this being almost like a, a nice, rich terracotta? So we're going to end up with five beads there because I'm going to go like that and it should fill up be six beads actually. Don't know, <laughs> just made a mess basically haven't I? Let's move on to have a look at the jessamineite colours. They're the ones we haven't done so far. So let's get another pot on the go. And I'm only going to mix up one colour of these, I think. Um, to that, what should we do? What should we do? We've got blue, green, yellow. We've got they're all the primary colours basically. Uh, let's see how red we can get. Red, if you get what I mean. Because when you're mixing them with a white powder, how easy is it going to be to get an actual vivid red? And you know what? I'm, I actually don't know. I've, I've not actually tried that before. I usually go for pastels with these materials. So let's give it a try. Now, it's been a while since I used these. <laughs> And I'm going to put a lot, because I think I'm going to need a lot. You can tell by the way the top's gone all powdered. I didn't I didn't get on with jessamineite because, as you know, and as I alluded to earlier, quite a lot, um, I'm not very good at mixing when it comes to measuring and being accurate, using scales, um, hate it, always mess it up. Um, so, I didn't get on with it at all. 
it is amazing stuff because the once I did get it to work it was like whoa this is good <laughs> and of course I'd seen Claire using it a lot and she's the absolute master of it um, so I really really wanted to be able to use it I just was rubbish at it so that's how that's actually how I first got chatting to Claire was I, um, I basically sent it to Claire because I thought it's just going to go off sat on my shelf and that's a waste so I sent it to Claire anyway that is making a very nice bright red the question is will it still cool actually can I get it any brighter red than that is another question don't know how far I can push this with the pigment and it's still cool so let's try it because this is always a problem isn't it it's like with using white um, polyurethane resin if you put too much colour in you can't get it to cure so and as it's white to start with it's just going to be a pain you know what that spotty one is just crying out to have red on the back isn't it I'm going to want this to flow a bit better than that so let's add a load of water probably too much but yeah I mean if you add if you add a lot of colour to you can add as much colour as you like to something that's white to start with are you ever going to get a proper fully rich colour looks like yes <laughs> interesting so you can get bright red there we go I learnt something too there <sighs> what to do with the rest of it <laughs> uh, let's have a couple of red beads why not shall we So, as I said, we know the jessamineite colour works. We've probably all seen Claire doing it with jessamineite colouring uh, and various eco resin alternatives. Oh, Lord, it looks like I'm bleeding to death now. Red everywhere. Um, and so I will leave it at that for, for that colouring. So what we've done so far then is messed around I've made an almighty mess I've got it all over my hands and probably should have worn gloves just for that reason alone uh, but we've tried some colours that's the main thing and so for our colouring pieces and how brittle do they end up does it actually work with small jewellery pieces type experiments there's not much more to do what I am going to do is just finish off the stripey ones I'm going to back these two. So for the stripy ones, let's do that first. We're going to need a bit of colour. And we were using Lippy in those and Apricot. I think Apricot's going to go across, isn't it? It'll go into both. So let's do a really strong apricot a strong colour with the apricot this time. See how bright that is? Isn't it pretty? These colours are great because they, I mean, I think they're intended to be, you know, you know use them subtle. Maybe you don't use quite a stronger colour as I'm doing here. <laughs> Um, but the fact that you can use them for really strong colouring too is brilliant. I love them. But I need to get more of them. So I should be treating myself 
to a load more of these come payday. Because as I think as you you'll probably have noticed, we've played with a lot of different ways to colour um, your eco resin alternative stuff here. But by far the best way is the stuff that's actually intended for it. I have to say, food colouring is pretty awesome, but whether it stays colour fast, you know, time will tell on that one. So what I'm going to do now is just go around everything and finish it off with white. First, I'm going to just leave that another 20 minutes to cure. But while that's while that's uh, curing, let's look back at some of the things we did first, which were 45 minutes ago, according to my timer on my camera, and see just how they are getting on. Forgot to tap these, didn't I? I hope it's not too late. All right, let's clear a patch in the middle here. <clears throat> So these big ones are going to be my sacrificial lambs, big in inverted commas, they're not that big, because they are quite thin, as you can probably see, that one particularly so. Now I know that when you first demould this stuff, as has happened there it can be a little bit brittle. Now that one was obviously I didn't do very well round the loop at the top. There we go, let's pull that one off a bit more carefully. So let's see how easy that is to break at the moment. I have to say, very. But let's try it again in another, let's leave it an hour and we'll try it again. We will also try putting some sealant on them. We'll try the two different sorts of sealant and see which is strongest. Because then that will tell us what we should be using on the rest of these, won't it? So that's, we're going to put those to one side again. Now, some of the other things that have now cured are these beads. So let's get those out and then I'll just go around and top everything up with white and we'll be back in half an hour or so. Oh, and they're cute. Oops, now that one has crumbled. So, I'm going to leave it a bit longer. Yeah, it still feels soft. Message there then, if it's something that's a bit thicker, it's going to take longer to cure, to really harden. I suppose it's got a mould around it. It's trapping the moisture in, isn't it? So, yeah, that makes sense that we should need to give it longer. Okay, there's something else we've learned here. I'm going to make a list of things we're learning. So, what have we learnt so far? Let's grab a pen. One thing we've learnt is that Tracy doesn't know where she keeps her pens. Okay, let's get a ridiculous pen. Right. Colours. What works best is jessamineite colour, food colouring, with the caveat that I don't know how long that will stay or keep its colour for. So let's put a question mark against that, but initially it definitely works. We have established that um, obviously the homeware designs ones work really well.
So those are all big ticks for colouring if you're going to be making jewellery with your eco pour. Demolding. I would say leave it at least an hour. You, you theoretically can de demold it sooner as we prove with these, but because they're so delicate, I would say I would say leave it at least an hour. I'm going to leave it more like two. Which I know then that puts it up there with is it any really any great advantage over using resin? Well. I don't think this is ever going to be an advantage over using resin other than the fact that it's eco, it's safe. Um, so that's always going to be an advantage. But its real bonus is you get this lovely, this lovely sort of almost like a ceramic finish rather than the plasticky finish of resin. So if you're wanting something different really, then this is the way to go. So I don't think I'll ever call it a resin alternative because it's just, it's a thing all of its own. Does that make sense? Waffling again, stop it. Right, so we've learnt that. We've learnt that we can marble. So that's a tick. The solid beads, jewellery still out on those. We managed to do a stone effect by accident. And that was because the acrylics didn't mix as well as I wanted. Anyway, this is what we've learned so far. So I'm going to top these up with white and then we'll be back in a bit to kind of finish the whole thing off. Okay, we're going to try and demold some of these. It's been another hour. Now some of these seem a little bit damp to me still. I think presumably because the amount of colour I put in has slowed down the drying process. But uh, let's see what we've got and what we can get out without breaking at this point. <laughs> Those are cute, aren't they? <laughs> so let's start a pile. I've already oh, I already demolded the little heart. So yeah, you can do two different colours in there. That's not a problem. Let's put the coloured ones up here. The marble ones come out kind of nice. Now you could, of course, um, coat that with some UV resin or just varnish it or whatever if you wanted. Now what I would say is, if you're making jewellery, you're going to have to be very careful around where there's a little hole in the built into the mould for you. Got some nice blanks coming out. Because if it's going to break, that's where it's going to break. And in fact that one just has. Not a problem though, it's broken in the same place both sides. Yeah, so I should be able to do something with that. That one's just snapped in half. I'm getting plenty of little bits that we can experiment on the sturdiness with. I'm putting all the broken bits to one side. I think I'm coming to the conclusion that you need to leave these a hell of a lot longer to really harden up. Right, so this is one of the multicoloured ones. Let's see how that has worked. Oh yeah, that's really quite cute. So we know that works then. <laughs> now these are still slightly damp. I'm going to leave them. They're ones I did quite late on, so we'll leave those for a while. And this, I think it's the ones that had got a lot more colour in. Um, the red still hasn't cured, so we'll put that to the back there. Now uh, these, again, the red hasn't cured, so I'm going to be careful not to tip that out. But let's see what these have done. Oh, that's worked! Isn't that nice? <laughs> I like those. They're kind of cutesy. So there's definitely some potential there. Now this one. It's got butterflies. 
There's little holes in it. Oh, that's nice, that's worked. This one I messed up the back so I put some colour on the some white on it. Now this one is tiny and it's got that butterfly hole thing going on. Yeah, I like, I like. And that one I put backing on it so the butterfly holes are, aren't all the way through. That's cool. Right, let's have a go at this lot. Let's see if we can demold these without them breaking this time. Yes, we have a bead. We have another bead. <laughs> Was this, a, was this a stripey? Did I put different colours in this one? No, it's just a white one. Oh, it is a bit of a stripe. Oh, look, there's a bit of resin from before in there. Something got trapped in it. All right. Makes me wonder, can we do a half resin and a half eco pour? Should we have a go at that at some point, people? Shall we? Okay, let's have a bit of a durability test with our eco pour. These have now been out and cured for about, uh, about an hour and I've got some pieces here of a, well I was going to say similar size but they're not really are they? Let's try, let's have that one. So these are going to be our lambs to the slaughter. Right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do, I'm going to leave the heart just as it is. I'm going to do one of these, and I'll label which is which, with bloom finish from Create and Bloom. And the other one, I'm going to wax it with this. This is from Homeware Designs. So this one will be nothing. I mean, ideally, I should have done them all the same shape and size, shouldn't I? And the same thickness, but we'll see. Um, see, those two are close on the same thickness. This one's a little bit thinner. Actually, have we got one that's a bit thicker? Those two are about the same. And that's is that about the same. No, that's a bit thinner. Okay, right. So that's the nothing one. This will be wax. Sharpie pens don't draw on it very well, by the way. Um, and this will be the create and bloom. So first, let's do the wax. Um, and then what I'm going to do is see what they're like in kind of 24 hours time. Now the wax I shall be putting on with, uh, it's just, it's just a kitchen sponge, I have got some cosmetic sponges somewhere, which would be a lot nicer to use, <laughs> but it will do the job. 
and I'm kind of putting plenty on and I will do the back as well and before I is that going to smudge? yeah it's smudging I know which is which anyway I can just about make out that's a W so before I buff it off I'm going to let that sit Got smudges on the front as well now so yeah I'm going to let it kind of I don't know whether it absorbs in or not really but we'll, we'll see now this is the liquid one from Create and Bloom I don't quite know how this differs from things like Mod Podge um, not sure perhaps someone could let me know but I do know it puts on a really nice finish and you can sponge it on I really should clean my brush properly first you can sponge it on, you can paint it on, you can dilute it um, yeah so I'm going to put two coats on with these once they've dried and then like I said in 24 hours time we'll see we'll do a test different see if there's a difference with the strengths of these and uh, whether they you know whether they're more resilient for having been coated on or whether it makes any difference so I'll report back shortly okay doing some playing with some of these pieces we've got three over here testing the durability still I've got different coatings on those but this cute little cutie here I thought we'd coat it with UV resin now in a way it seems a shame to spoil that rather unique almost uh, almost like unglazed ceramic feel uh, that you get with this stuff but you know this is all about experimenting let's experiment now the resin soaks into it so it makes it a little bit darker you do get that whereas with the just the sealants you don't get that so much now obviously I've inadvertently filled in the little hole which would be where you'd dangle it if it was a pendant but that would be easy to easy enough to drill out again afterwards so not going to be too worried about that although I could I could poke a little micro brush through it couldn't I to clean it back out there we are that worked right let's uh, put a little drop more on this end and let's cure it there we go I trapped a few bubbles in there I should have cleared the bubbles first but yeah it's stuck <laughs> isn't that cute there we are another little experiment sorted Okay everyone, please forgive this going on in the background. I kind of forgot I got something to finish and started on something else. Anyway, that's it for a later video. Now these, I also had a bit of a brain fart and actually tested these for durability, with the ones that I coated with various things, um, and forgot to press record. Anyway, suffice it to say, both snapped. It made no difference whether they were coated with something or not when they were that thin however look how thick these particular ones are and this is a few days on that is really strong anyway so uh, end results of the durability test strong if you make it thicker too thin yeah it's gonna snap um that i would say is too thin that probably will snap just that little bit thicker like these and suddenly you've got some durability anyway look out for the next video folks because i will be doing some different techniques with these I will be putting into practice that discovery that we can do, put UV resin on them so I think my first one will be using the stickers and uh, like washi tape and things like that but there will be a whole series of them that I'm going to do over a period of, of time now we've got that initial experimenting out of the way so uh, I'll see you for the next video and well done if you've watched this whole thing it's over an hour you, like me, need to get out more. <laughs> anyway, in the meantime, YouTube will recommend a video to you. It'll be up here somewhere. That's what YouTube thinks you would like to watch next. So enjoy and I'll see you soon.